Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Barry Norman on behalf of CMS, Capital Market Traders, and Investing.com. And welcome to our class on the types of technical indicators. Now, tonight's class is sponsored by Capital Market Traders, CMSTraders.com, one of the world's leading platform providers. Now, because CMS Trader is a regulator provider, I'm required to give you a risk warning, so let me read that and get it out of the way. Trading Forex CFDs and spread bets on margin carries a high level of risk and may not be suitable for all investors. You may lose more of, than your initial deposit and could be required to deposit additional funds. Please ensure you fully understand the risk and take care to manage your exposure. <clears throat> now, if you want, you can set up a demo account with www.cmstrader.com by just going to the website and click on the buy or the sell button and you just have to put an email address and a password and you can use their charts and follow along using their charts tonight on the technical indicators that we're going to be putting or learning about this evening. And while you're there, give them a shot is one of the world's leading platform providers and they are a regulated provider and they also have uh, superb security, impeccable service, and an extensive education program for their clients. Now, you have a multitude of accounts. You get free daily signals. You have unlimited access to all the platforms. You get daily market updates and technical analysis on the spot. <clears throat> you can trade a wide a range of instruments from CFDs to Forex for stocks, commodities, and indices. And you can also use their social uh, media trading, uh, their social networking trading using their watch, copy, profit, where no experience is necessary. Just join their social trading, copy their most successful traders with one click, and increase your profits. And you can also learn to become an independent trader with CMS Trader using their video tutorials, their one-on-one -on -one sessions with financial experts, and their full line and array, uh, wide array of eBooks. Now tonight we're going to be talking about technical indicators which fall into the family of technical analysis. Now traders who subscribe to technical analysis operate under the fundamental theory that prices move in patterns or their prices and their prices never lie. Now <clears throat> to the inexperienced eye a financial chart may look like an unpredictable line with a jumble of colors and marks. But these traders are watching charts to pick up on the subtlest indicators of where price, share prices could be headed next. So here's a, a breakdown, to, or tonight we're going to break down some of the most common indicators that traders are watching and what they mean. So the main similarity between technical analysis indicators is that they use security prices opens, highs, lows, and closes, as well as volume in their calculations. This small number of variables has produced hundreds and even thousands of trading indicators. These technical indicators fall mainly into two categories. These are called leading and lagging indicators. Now, leading indicators are those who lead the price movement. They give us a signal before a new trend or reversal occurs. Lagging indicators are those who follow the price action and they give us a signal after the trend or the reversal has started. Indicators from both categories belong to one of the following. Okay, so there are five categories we're going to look at. Trend, momentum, volatility, or volume indicators. Now, <clears throat> It is important to understand the differences. Too many people I know that trade out there, especially novice traders, oh, well, I like RSI and I like stochastics and I like RSI because their buddies told them about it or they've read about it somewhere and they think it's all a great, they think they're all great indicators. But the fact is RSI, stochastics, and stochastics, RSI are the same type of indicators. And if you're building a trading system, you should use indicators at least one indicator that fits each one of the categories so that you're not missing something. When you use only indicators that fit one category, 
they're all basically telling you something, and they're all telling you the trend. The trend is reversing, and maybe they're wrong because something mathematically happened or something happened in the market. You're not using another indicator that might be pointing out, ah, maybe it's not so. So the first group of indicators is called trends. These identify trends over different time frame. Identifying trends over different time frames are useful because it can help weed out all the noise of daily volatility. Any type of trend, including uptrends, downtrends, and sideways trends, can be traded for profit so long as it's shown itself to be consistent. Trend traders use a number of different indicators to help them figure out what kind of trend a stock or an asset is in. One of the most popular of these indicators is moving averages, which is represented by a single line that represents the average price over a given period of time. A 50-day moving average or a 200-day moving average are the most popular. Now, you can use all combinations. There's a 30, 60, 90 strategy. Okay, they're all different types of moving average strategies, but they all still fit in this category of trend indicators. So we also have some of the most popular, MACD, which is the most popular indicator out there. We also have average directional index, parabolic SAR, and linear regression. So let's go quickly over and look at what these look like in a chart. So let me pop up a chart here for you. And let me get all these other indicators off of here, and we're going to pop up. Okay, so we're just on a standard euro US dollar chart, and we're going to pop up a moving average. So we're going to go over here, we're going to scroll down to find we moving averages. And now there's all types of moving averages. Tonight, we're not here. I could spend, like I said earlier, there's a thousand different types of indicators. Okay. We're not here to learn a specific strategy. We're not here tonight to learn about a specific, we're, we're going to learn tonight the different types of indicators that fit into what categories. So we have, as you see, moving average, exponential moving averages, weighted moving average, but we're just going to use a standard moving average. Okay. And we're going to click on here, and it's dropped the moving average on our chart. Now we want to customize this to whatever moving average we want to use. Okay, so we want to use an input and right now we're using a nine. Say we want to use a 20-day moving average. Okay. Now, moving averages are simply a mathematical calculation taking, if you're looking, and there's a misnomer here. When we say a 20-day moving average, it's because people have started out trading years ago on daily charts. Now, we trade on 15-minute charts, 30-minute charts. Each one of these is a, a time segment. When you're talking about a 30-day or 20-day moving average. This is just the, the generic way of saying it. It would be in a 30-minute chart, it would be 20 bars or 20 lines on a chart. So that means if you're looking at a 30-minute chart, that would cover the last 10 hours or 20 bars on the chart, 20 of the particular time frame. We just call it a 20-day moving average. So if you're looking at a daily, a daily chart, it would be a 20-day. And it's simply an average of price. But by combining two moving averages, I'm just putting a second one on the chart. and a 60-day moving average, we then have a, a moving average strategy. And we might want to look for crossovers. But moving averages are based on trends, and they fall under the category we call trend indicators. Another popular one is also known as MACD. MACD as you notice is put on below the chart. Okay, so MACD is now dropped on here 
And again, we have a whole class just dedicated to MACD. So tonight, I'm not going to, I can't spend, it would take me an hour, if not more, to teach you about MACD. But as you notice, it is a different type of indicator, but it's still a trend indicator. It's all based on trend price movement and predicts when a trend is about to end. So these all fit in the first category we're talking about tonight, which are trends. So let's go back to my PowerPoint. The pop up on your screen in a second. Okay. Then we have volume. Now, volume, of course, is the measure of the total number of shares or contracts that traded in a given time period, where volume really comes in handy is as a confirmation. Many traders use volume to confirm the conclusion from another type of indicator such as trend. Volume is dropped on the bottom of your chart and indicates the number of transactions occurring or number of contracts occurring. Now, we should see volume moving in or supporting the trend action that we see in the trend above. Sometimes market conditions or the lack of liquidity alone can temporarily drive a stock or an asset higher or lower. However, these moves often occur on relatively low volume and can be short-lived. So you would be looking at a volume indicator to support the price movement. You see, if the volume, that means if the traders are jumping into the market to trade that bump up, means it's a probably a temporary reaction. We also have volume indicators, which are called money flow index, chain in money flow, on balance volume, demand index, and force index. Okay. Or you can use straight volume indicators. Then we go to my favorite, which are momentum indicators. Momentum indicators are like speedometers for traders. They show how fast the stock is moving in a given direction. These indicators are typically displayed as what we call oscillators, which fluctuate above and below the baseline to determine how much positive or buy momentum a asset is experiencing. Arguably, the most popular of these momentum indicators is RSI, or Relative Strength Index. RSI is represented by a chart that tracks a stock's price on a scale to 0 to 100. Most RSI charts have lines at 30 and 70. So RSI charts are also fall in an area called bounded. So are stochastics. Now, let's pop up the chart again. And let's get rid of MACD. Now we're going to click on here and put RSI. Excuse me, there's a gentleman, I don't even know the names, that keeps telling me about his slides and things not moving. This is not on RN. Please log off your computer and then log back in or check your refresh button. But everybody here is seeing slides with no problem except for you. So just sending me message after message after message doesn't fix anything for you. And to everybody out there, if most likely the pro if you're having a problem, it is on your computer side. Please, before you send messages, log out and log back in, reboot your computer, refresh it, okay? Because there's very little I can do to help you, unfortunately. I would if I could. Okay. Now, indicators um, like RSI are again dropped on the bottom of our chart. So let's scroll down here and we're gonna go to relative strength index. And we've now dropped it on our chart. Okay. These are called bounded indicators because, okay, well, first of all, they are always on the bottom of our chart. They fall below price. Okay. And as you can see here, they have the calculation for RSI is a mathematical calculation. This calculation will always come out to between 0 and 100. Between the areas of 0 to 30 is no action zone, and between the numbers of 70 to 100 are no action, are, I'm sorry, these are where the action takes place in these zones, the 0 to 30 and the 70 to 30. When they're in between, they're really not telling you something. When it breaks above, it's telling you a stock is oversold, and when it breaks below, is telling you that a stock is overbought. 
Hold on. And these are called bounded because they are bounded between that number zero and 100. They are also momentum indicators because they're telling you the momentum of the move, the current move, price movement. Okay, we have RSI, we have stochastics. And we also have one that's called RSI stochastics that combines the two. Now, not every one of them are bound between 0 and 100. Like there's MACD histogram that always comes out around a zero line. Okay. All of these, though, that are using a particular calculation and come within a range always will fall down here as bounded oscillators. So under the momentum category, if a, if a asset moves below 30, that is a signal, the, the indicator below 30, is that the asset is overbought and buyers could soon come in and drive the price higher. However, it's worth noting that RSI can sometimes stay above 70 or below 30 for a prolonged period of time. Because the thing about overbought and oversold indicators is they can tell you the market is overbought and oversold, but that doesn't mean a market cannot continue to be overbought. Other examples of momentum indicators are the CCI or Commodity Channel Index or Shonday's Momentum Indicator or Williams Percent R, which is an extremely popular momentum indicator. Then we have volatility. Volatility is a measure of how large a asset's movement is in a given period of time tends to be. When an asset makes large moves in a short time, it is considered to be volatile. Volatility is a very important indicator for traders because volatility makes it easier to profit due to price flux inefficiencies. Without volatility, trading opportunities would be very limited. So one of the most important things we look for is volatility. We want an asset, especially if we're trading CFDs or four, we want an asset that is moving up or down. Because if you're a good trader, you can make profit going up and make profit going down. And that's what you want is you need to have, because if price is steady or if price is congested or say a stock, Apple's trading at 142, 142, 142, 142, 10, 142, 20, back to one, you can't make any money. Okay, so a trader, now if you're looking for long-term investment, that's a whole different story because you just care. You'd be very happy if Apple said at 142, 142, 140, 10, 142, 20, 142, 30, 140. You don't care if it takes a year because you're just looking for a slow growth investment where when you're trading and you're doing CFD or Forex trading, you want that volatility because it opens up opportunities. Volatility is so important to traders that the Chicago Board of Options Exchange Volatility Index, the VIX, is one of the most closely watched indicators in the entire market. In addition to the VIX, traders use volatility metrics such as average true range, Bollinger Bands, and envelopes. Now, we have an entire class on Bollinger Bands. And Bollinger Bands is one of the most well-respected indicators in the marketplace. And Bollinger Bands were developed by John Bollinger uh, for stocks in the 19 early 1980s and it was adapted to Forex and is now one of the most popular used in Forex and CFD trading. Now, when we look at these indicators, they come into two categories which we talked about before, leading and lagging. So you also need to know which ones to break into which categories. You don't want to use all lagging or all leading indicators. So when we're talking about trend indicators, which measures the direction and the strength of a trend using some form of price averaging to establish a baseline, we, moving averages and moving average or MACD are lagging indicators. They are slightly behind the market. So moving averages are used to identify current trends and trend reversals, as well as to set up support and resistance levels. Now, MACD used to reveal changes in strength, direction, and momentum. 
But then we have parabolic stops and reverse parabolics, which are actually leading indicators. And they are used to find potential reversals. Not when a reversal has happened, they are predicting reversal. Okay. Now, leading indicators sometimes are not as accurate. Okay. So a leading indicator gives trade signals when a trade is about to start, when a trend is about to start. They try to predict price by using a shorter period in their calculations, thereby leading the price movement. The the most popular leading indicators are stochastics, MACD, and RSI. So they fall under the category of leading indicators, even though two are momentum indicators and the other is a trend indicator. Lagging indicators are those that fo follow the price action. They give a signal after the trend or the reversal has started. Use them to determine a, tr use them to determine a trend. The most common lagging indicator is the moving average. Why? Because moving average, it can only be calculated after that time frame is, is calculated. So it's always calculating behind. These technical indicators measure the direction and strength of trend by comparing price to an established baseline. Moving averages. Moving averages are used to identify trends and reversals as well as to set up support and resistance levels. Parabolic stop and reversals are used to find potential reversals in the market price direction, where moving average convergence and divergence, which is the, one of the most popular in the market, MACD, is used to reveal changes in strength, direction, momentum, and the duration of a trend. These indicators are designed to show traders and investors the trend or direction of an asset they are trading. The trend of an asset can be either downward or upward or possibly sideways. Trend followers are an example of tra traders who use trend indicators to analyze the markets. Then we go over to momentum indicators like stochastics, CCI, and relative strength index. They, if you notice, they are all leading indicators. They fall in a category called oscillators. These technical indicators may identify the speed of the price movement by comparing the current closing price to previous closes. The stochastic oscillator is used to predict price turning points by comparing the closing price to its price range, whereas relative strength index measures recent trading strength, velocity of change in the trend, and magnitudes of the move. And all of these fall in an area that's considered oscillators. Then the momentum is a measure of the speed at which the value of the security is moving in a given period. Momentum traders focus on stocks or assets that are moving significantly in one direction on high volume. In other words, if we see an asset moving up and the volume is high and you are a momentum indicator, that tells you that momentum's got some legs to it and it's going to continue up and you would enter that market to trade it in that direction of the momentum. For that they use momentum indicators such as RSI, Stochastics, and CCI and Williams percent R. As you can see momentum indicators are especially composed of oscillating indicators that are usually used to determine overbought and oversold positions. Then we go to volatility indicators. In this case, we notice they are all lagging. So if you notice in momentum indicators, they were all leading indicators, whereas volatility are all lagging indicators. They measure the rate of price movement regardless of the direction. This is generally based on the change in the highest and the lowest historical price. They provide useful information about the range of a buying and selling that are taking place in a given market and help traders determine points where the market may change direction. So, volume. Now, volume are those, these technical indicators measure the rate of price movement regardless of direction. Bollinger Band measures the highness and the lowness of price relative to the previous trades. Average true value shows the degree of the price volatility and standard deviation used to measure expected risk 
and to determine the significance of the price movement. So let's go over and look at the most popular Bollinger Bands on a chart. So Bollinger Bands, let's let me get these. Bollinger Bands falls on a price chart. It is one of the few that actually goes over top of the price on a price chart. And as you can see, Bollinger Bands puts a band above and below on the chart. And what we're using is the indicators, the above and the, the, the two red lines, the one at the top and the bottom. These are, <clears throat> and what we can see, number one, is the width of the band shows us the volatility in the markets. Most price action will take place within this band. As price moves to the upper band, okay, we would expect price to fall off that and bounce back to the lower band. So this is showing us volatility as well as trends. You can use Mac, uh, Bollinger Bands for several different types of indicators, especially when the Bollinger Band price breaks out of the channel. So a lot of, of these, these indicators fall in different areas. So we have Bollinger Bands now, which are on the chart. We have RSI and Stochastics, which are below. And we've now added on, on volume below also. Okay, now on volume, which is we see down below, let me darken that in so you can see it better. Now, this is not a bounded indicator because it doesn't fall between specific numbers and have a range. Okay. But this is an indicator that is measuring the volume. And then we also have the true volume indicator, which we see right here. And this is telling us the actual volume. So we can see there was a surge up in volume here. We saw a price movement here. We might, this stayed within its range, but look at the RSI stochastic. It came out of its range, okay, and moved into the overbought level as the market, the price actually moved in consolidation. But there's many different ways to read these indicators. Somebody just asked me, what are the best combination of indicators to be used for traders? There is no such thing. Like we said earlier, there's over a thousand different indicators. Everybody has their own strategy. Everybody has their own thing. Okay. It is not a matter of which two or three work together the best. There is no such thing. Now, you should never take three indicators from the same category because they just tell you the same thing. So what you would be looking at is a combination. But you might like RSI better than Stochastics. You might like Williams Percent R better than another one. Or a buddy might tell you which one it is. Okay, somebody asked, what are the basic indicators? There is no basic indicator. Not at all. Today, we have lots of buzzwords in the markets. Okay. So what are the buzzwords everybody knows? MACD, Bollinger Bands, RSI, Stochastics. They're the big ones that everybody knows only because somehow or another they became the big, big thing, the big popular things when computerized charts came about. When I started trading, these were out there, but nobody used them. Because nobody spent the time, because you were doing hand calculations and hand everything else and hand charting. You didn't have the time to do this. Today, everybody says because a couple of Forex companies said RSI and did some videos on RSI, everybody wants to do RSI. Just like everybody comes to me and says, I want to trade with volume, I want to trade with, with Japanese candlesticks. Fine. 
They said, I like the reds and greens. But they don't want to spend the months learning all the patterns and how to use Japanese candlesticks. Okay. So what I'm telling you is what you need to do is pick and test. Not pick it. Find one you like. Find any one you like. Once you find one that you like, learn all about it. Learn to read it. Put it on your charts. Test it. Back test it. Use it. I've been trading for 40 years, and you know what? I use a hand of handful of indicators because it takes you that long to learn how to use them all. Okay. It's not a matter of I'm going to give you three because also – the three that I might give you might work in the markets this week because the market doing one thing. They don't work next week. Indicators don't always work in all markets. So you have to understand what markets you're looking at, how the markets are moving, why they're moving, and then figure out what indicators work the best in that type of market. You also have to realize when an indicator isn't working. Okay. Most indicators will also give you adjustments to their calculations. And for instance, you might find that MACD works better at a 220 or two and a half than it does on what it standard is. This is this is what makes you a good trader and everybody else losers. Okay. If you want to follow three things that somebody gives you, you will not understand because you have no idea how to use them in and out in every market. You'll lose your money and you'll go away mad. If you want to spend the time and become the master of each indicator and then keep adding on another one to see how it works and build a strategy, that's how you would use it. What we're talking about tonight is what category each of these falls in so that you're not making a foolish mistake and picking everything from the same category. Now, somebody just asked, okay, what is the, okay, because I want to go back to the class. We have a few more minutes. And I want to, somebody asked, did Japanese invent candlesticks? Japanese candlesticks have been around since the 1700s, and they were invented by Japanese rice traders and used to predict the price of rice. And it's been adapted over the years for the markets. But, yes, it was the Japanese. Okay. Somebody asked about signal. There are many different kinds of, of indicators that fall in all of these categories that will give you entry and exit positions. Okay. Another person, can I use on one and five minute time frame charts, RSI or stochastic. Yes, you can use them on any. Some indicators don't work well in short terms and some work very well. Again, you'll only learn these by testing them and, tr and backtracking them. Okay, this is what you gotta do. You have to test them. So let's get back on. You have to, you know, you can go on to, <clears throat> there's a lot of, um, you can go on the internet and search for strategy testing and it allow you to back test all these different strategies and you can they'll back test it for you and you can test it and test it because you've got to see how they work okay I, I'm not going to tell you any combination of ones if you want to come to one of my classes it's called the triple header class because those are people like myself who teach you my strategy okay because I'm just trying to build my name out there and so I have my triple header strategy but unless you learn it yourself, you'll never learn what markets it works. And I'm trying tonight to help you understand what you have to do to become a good trader. Okay. So let's go back to the PowerPoint because otherwise we're going to get lost on, on track tonight. And we have lots of different webinars. And you can come to, we have, like I said, we have whole webinars on Stochastics, whole webinars on MACD, whole webinars on, on each one of Bollinger Bands. So let's go back to volume indicators because lots of people are asking about volume. Okay. So volatility is an important in trading that you can find several indicators that measure or use to generate signals. The volatility is the relative rate at which the price of a security moves up or down. High volatility occurs when the price moves up and down quickly 
over a short period of time. If the price moves slowly, then we consider it to have low volatility. Some of the volatility indicators include our Bollinger Bands, envelopes, uh, ATR, average true range, volatility channel indicator, volatility check-in, and projection oscillators. So hopefully that answered the person who was asking about it. Okay. The best one and the most popular out there, since everybody's asked for what is the recommended, is Bollinger Bands. And we have a whole one-hour class on Bollinger Bands. But Bollinger Bands will show you all the volatility in the markets and help you find entry. Bollinger Bands will give you entry and exit signals in a volatile market. So we have two popular leading indicators and one lagging. So check-in oscillator monitors the flow of money in and out of the market. Comparing money flow to price action helps to identify tops and bottoms in short and intermediary cycles. On-balance on volume is on-balance volume attempts to measure the level of accumulation or distribution by comparing volume to price movements. And VRC does volume rate of change, highlights in, increase in volume, which normally occurs at most significant market tops bottoms and breakouts. So VRC is lagging where the other two are leading indicators. These technical indicators measure the strength of a trend based on the volume of shares or securities or assets being traded. Check-in oscillator monitors the flow of money. On balance, on balance volume attempts to measure level of accumulation and VRC highlights increase in volume. So VRC is very, very helpful in looking at volume. Okay. The volume of trades is a very important component in trading. It is, for example, used to confirm or infirm a continuation or change in an asset direction. Many indicators are also based on volume. For example, the money flow index is an oscillator tied to volume that measures the buying and selling pressure using both price and volume. Then we go to our fifth category, which is overbought and oversold. When a security is overbought, the implication is that buying has pushed the price too far up and a reaction called a price pullback is expected. When an asset is oversold, the implication is selling has pushed the price too far down and a reaction called a price bounce is expected. We will spend more time on these types of indicators later in the class. But remember, overbought and oversold markets can remain for indefinite periods in those positions. Now, indicators indicate. It's a great little two-word combination here, but that's exactly what they do. Indicators indicate. This may sound straightforward, but sometimes traders ignore the price action of the security and solely focus solely on indicators. Okay. Indicators filter price action with formulas. As such, they are derivatives and not direct reflection of price action. This should be taken into consideration when applying analysis. Any analysis of an indicator should be taken with price action in mind. So what does an indicator say about price action of security? Is the price action getting stronger or weaker? Now, this paragraph is so true. I have too many traders who spend so much time that they could tell me exactly what RSI is doing, exactly what Stochastic is doing, exactly what MACD just did, but they can't tell me what's happened in the price and the trend line on the charts. They can't tell me how close it is to a support and resistance line, and they can't tell me if a chart pattern developed. So, the first thing I would tell anybody when building indicators on what they should start with is support and resistance, trend lines, and then look for chart patterns. Combine these with Japanese candlesticks. And there you have a whole trading system. And then you can drop on things like MACD or RSI or stochastic to help you get entry points and exit points to help you understand how strong that trend is. But indicators are, should be, and technical, the, the technical analysis off chart, which is not trend lines, volume is an on chart indicator, and support and resistance sh and chart pattern should be your first 
level of trading decision. Your support would be then your technical analysis or your indicators that are put on afterwards. Technical analysis and indicators are not your primary trading system. So even though it may be obvious when trade indicators generate buy and sell signals, the signal should be taken in context with other technical analysis tools. An indicator may flash a buy signal, but if the chart pattern shows a descending triangle with a series of de declining peaks, it may be a false signal. As always in technical analysis, learning how to read indicators is more of an art than it is a science. The same indicator may exhibit different behavioral patterns when applied to different stocks or assets. Indicators that might work well for IBM may not work well for Delta Airlines. The, through careful study and analysis, expertise with the various indicators will develop over time. As these expertises develop, certain nuances as well as favorite setups will become clear. And this is what I was trying to tell you earlier. And this is why I don't try, I don't try to lead you, I don't try to make you drink. I try to lead you to the trough of water. I try to, to, to help you get there. Okay. There are hundreds of indicators in use today. With these indicators being created every week, technical analysis software programs come up, come with dozens of indicators built in and even allow users to create their own. Given the amount of hype that is associated with indicators, choosing an indicator to follow can be a daunting task. Even with the introduction of hundreds of new indicators, only a select few really offer a different perspective and are worthy of attention. Strangely enough, these indicators that usually merit the most attention are those that have been around the longest time and have stood the time of test of time. Bollinger Bands, Stochastics, RSI, MACD. Okay. And because they've been around so long, so long, what's happened is as Forex grew and CFD trading grew and these brands and these affiliates needed content. Because the world is all about Google and content. So they kept looking for and reprinting articles, rewriting articles about the only ones that they could get information about. So they started writing over and over about sarcastic server. Because if you go back and read in the internet, you can find out 90% of this that you're reading is just rewrites from the original. So if you go to John, John Bollinger, developed, has his own website. Been around for years, it's trademark. And all that you've seen is you go to, to brand after brand, affiliate after affiliate, article after, and all they are are rewrites of the original thing that was written years ago by Bollinger explaining its indicator and oscillator. So look for the original stuff, but most of all, don't try to use somebody else's interpretation. Understand how the indicator works, test it and back test it, and come up with your own set of rules and how it works. So you understand the markets it works well in and how to find it and make it work the best. When choosing an indicator to use for analysis, choose carefully and moderately. Attempts to cover more than five indicators are usually futile. It is best to focus on two or three indicators and learn their intricacies in and out. Try to choose indicators that complement each other instead of those that move in unison and generate the same signals. For example, it would be redundant to use two indicators that are good for showing overbought and oversold levels, such as stochastics and RSI. Both of these indicators measure momentum and both have overbought and oversold levels. Okay. So remember, Leading indicators, as their name implies, leading indicators are designed to lead price movement. Most represent a form of price momentum over a fixed look back period, with, which is the number of periods used to calculate the indicator. For example, a 20 day stochastics oscillator would be used for the past 20 days of price action in about a month of its calculation. All prior price action would be ignored. Some of the more popular leading indicators include 
CCI momentum, relative strength index, stochastic, and Williams percent R. Okay, the benefits and drawbacks of leading indicators. There are clearly many benefits to using leading indicators. Early signaling for entry and exit is the main benefit. Leading indicators generate more signals and allow more opportunities to trade. Early signals can act as a forewarning as potential strength or weakness. Because they generate more signals, leading indicators are best used in trading markets. These indicators can be used in trending markets, but usually with the major trend not against it. In a market that is trending up, the best use is to help, to help identify oversold conditions. So, we have leading and lagging. We have the five different categories. But the rule comes down to finding a couple you like, finding a couple you feel comfortable with, at, or a name you like. I mean, I start with MACD only because I like the name. I actually like saying it. Moving Average Convergence Divergence. And it became my favorite. It's one that I know inside and out. And it's because I liked it. Okay. Because you'll find soon that some of them are very complicated. You just don't even like bother with them. So you just toss them away. Some of them, you know, you test a couple of times, they don't work well for you. Because it all depends on what assets you're trading, what markets you're trading, what time frames you're trading. Because what works for gold doesn't necessarily work for Forex. What works for Forex doesn't necessarily work for oil. Okay. And... So we want to be careful in what we're choosing. But remember, for technical indicators, there is a trade-off between sensitivity and consistency. In an ideal world, we want an indicator that is sensitive to price movement, gives early signals, and has few false signals. If we increase the sensitivity by reducing the number of periods, an indicator will find early signals, but the number of false signals will increase. If we decrease the sensitivity, by increasing the number of periods, then the number of false signals will decrease. But the signals will lag, and this will skew the reward to ratio payout. So again, there's lots of things you have to learn in and out. The longer a moving average is, the slower it will react, and the fewer signals it will generate. As the moving average is shortened, it becomes faster and more volatile, increasing the number of false signals. The same holds true for various momentum indicators. A 14-period RSI will generate fewer signals than a 5-period RSI. The 5-period RSI will be much more sensitive and have more overbought and oversold readings. It's up to the, each investor to select the time frame that suits his or her trading style and objectives. So, as the indicator comparison chart shows that we just saw before, oscillator movements are more confined and, and sustained movements are limited no matter how long of a time period. Over the two-year period, MACD fluctuated above and below zero, touching the zero line about 18 times. Also notice that each time MACD surpassed 80, the indicator pulled back. There are many different types of oscillators, and some belong to more than one category. The breakdown of oscillator types begin with two centered oscillators, which fluctuate above and below the center point, like MACD, okay, or banded oscillators like RSI and stochastics. So you need to see, so they all break down. There, you can keep breaking down these categories and categories and categories, and each of them fall into different areas. And you have to start learning and understanding this. And there's lots of things to think about because if I just told you, RS, do you use RSI, Bollinger Bands, and Stochastics? Well, you wouldn't even have any idea how to put them together. Because some also give you excellent convergence, while some will give you uh, divergence signals. Some will give you do very well on convergence. Some will give you entry and exit points. Okay. And it all depends on what you're looking for, how you're going to use them, what interpretation you're going to use, and how you're going to put it together. Okay. So... There's a lot to look at. There's a lot to digest. So somebody does keep asking me to recommend, and I keep recommending, MACD. If you use MACD and Bollinger Bands and you spend the next couple months mastering them, you'll have a great trading system. Okay. So start with them and learn them in and out. We have whole one-hour class on each one. We'll give you a good starting point to get them under hand. 
but you need to start somewhere. And that's why I recommend those two. And on that note, I'm going to say goodnight to everybody. Thank you very much for joining us. There is a lot to take in, a lot that we had to cover. And there's a lot that you just, you know, like I said, I've been trading for 40 years, and I haven't mastered a lot of, like I said, I use a very small amount. I'm more about price action on charts, support, resistance, trend lines, and that's it. This class has been recorded. You can access the recording in about 24 hours using the same link you used to come to tonight's class. So that's why I'm popping up each of these screens because I don't have time to cover them all. So you'll be able to read the screens when you see the recording and slow it down and get it all in. Because there's just a lot, lot to cover. So thank you very much for joining us tonight. I hope you learned a little bit and we'll talk to you again real soon. Good night now.